Okay, thank you everybody for coming today. State Representative Steve Draskowski here. Um, I um, called the press conference today to talk about the food program, the federal food, the food federal food program broad that uh, is happening in Minneapolis. And I think as we all know, and it's very unfortunate, it's a, it's a really difficult day for our state to realize that once again, Minnesotans are being defrauded by criminals. Uh, we had the daycare fraud that happened uh, a couple of years ago, a hundred million dollars of uh, money intended for poor people in Minneapolis that instead uh, criminals hijacked it and sent it to uh, other countries. Um, we had Medicaid fraud. Uh, if I remember correctly, the legislative auditor did an a, a audit that showed it was two to three hundred million dollars of taxpayer money uh, in five months, uh, over 40 percent of the recipients, uh, that if you extrapolate that out would be about a billion dollars or more of money that was intended for the poorest of the poor for health care that was stolen from them by people who didn't qualify. Um, just last year, we had voter fraud in Minneapolis. Uh, Liban Mohammed, the brother of Jamal Osman, who is now the city council member in Minneapolis, had 300 ballots in his car. He bragged about it in a self-incriminating video uh, that was placed um, uh, out, uh, onto the internet and made available. It was a video that uh, was handed to me by a uh, courageous uh, young Somali gal who saw this Snapchat by Liban Mohammed and uh, captured it and turned it over uh, to, to me and to Project Veritas at the time. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, food fraud aid, uh, food aid fraud uh, happening in Minneapolis. The food aid fraud in Minneapolis with this program amounts to $230 million of taxpayer money over two years. This is money that was intended again for the poorest of the poor, the needy among us, and was stolen from them by greedy criminals and uh, repurposed for their own uh, unique and selfish needs. Um, what I really wonder about this is, why is this always happening in Minneapolis? All four of the fraud things that I mentioned earlier, all four of them happen in Minneapolis. The crime in Minneapolis is going on under the watch of the elected officials there, and they seem to simply turn a blind eye every single time. This food program called Feeding Our Future is part of an organized crime network, and it's going on in Minneapolis. Uh, I am announcing the beginning of the formation of a bill that I'm working on to end fraud in this program. And uh, there's a press release, uh, I believe, that either went out or will be going out to you soon. Um, Unlike um, the fraud prevention bills that I've authored in the past for the daycare welfare program and others, this one is going to be one in which I am going to uh, press my colleagues in the Minnesota House from the city of Minneapolis to sign on to this bill and stop ignoring the fraud that is going on under their nose, seemingly with their full knowledge. Uh, because uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am a legislator 80 miles away from Mazeppa, Minnesota in rural Minnesota. And I have learned about this in the last several weeks from people, friends of mine, patriots, courageous patriots, whose life have been placed at risk as they tell uh, the FBI and other people about this. But the people in Minneapolis that are elected to protect them are nowhere to be found. The bill aims to uh, take fraud prosecutions outside of the city, county, and state agency structure and have an independent prosecution structure under state law that deals with these cases. We worked on language in 2019 responding to the CCAP fraud case that created such a structure. So we're gonna to try to emulate that with this bill. It establishes a welfare fraud board that could review cases and also establishes an independent prosecutor to handle these cases so that we actually have an agency that has the autonomy, the courage, and the correct direction to uh, enforce the law of the state of Minnesota and make sure that these welfare dollars that are intended for the neediest among us get to them in the form that it's intended by law 
instead of intercepted by greedy people who continue to steal from the needy. In Minneapolis, the Somali people are victimized by these greedy people, these greedy criminals, poor families with children who actually need the food in order to survive, have the money and the food that it's supposed to buy taken out from in front of them by these criminals that use it to uh, build their empire of money and political power. These needy folks are in fear while hungry, they're fearful of the people who are oppressing them. On top of that, the criminals are selling the image of the good and innocent people for whom, whom this program was intended, sullying their image uh, because they're uh, uh, too interested in taking advantage of these needy people who can't defend themselves. How much longer do these courageous patriots who live in Minneapolis need to live in fear if they report this fraud to the authorities. That's what I wanna know. Um, how many people have to worry about whether they're gonna be killed the next day because they report to police, to law enforcement, to the FBI, these illegal activities by these very greedy criminals. Meanwhile, the money intended for the poorest of the poor is blown on luxuries by criminals. Criminals continue to defraud the taxpayers of our state and nation right in front of the eyes of their elected leaders. They instead turn the money intended for poor people to live and have the basic fundamentals of life. Instead, they turn it into luxury vehicles in suburban McMansions, more money going away in suitcases, real estate for themselves, trips to Las Vegas, and they buy property in Kenya. What I wanna know, members of the media, people in Minnesota, where are our Minneapolis elected officials? Where is Ilhan Omar? Where is Keith Ellison? Where is Mohammed Noor? Where is Hadan Hassan? Where is Esther Agbeje? Where is Sidney Jordan? And Frank Hornstein, where, my friend, are you? in this as it's going on right under your nose. Again, I live 80 miles away from this fraud and corruption. These individual elected people are having the poorest of the poor in their community victimized by these horrible people that steal the money from them and the people of Minnesota who are trying to help them. And these elected officials turn their head because who knows why. Uh, we can all, maybe we need to ask them. Lastly, uh, two last things. Um, it has been reported to me over and over again by friends of mine, very good friends of mine that live in Minneapolis, that uh, Ali Issy, who's uh, also known as Ali Ghani, Congressman Ilhan Omar's district deputy director, has a connection to the safari restaurant where this um, fraud and corruption came out of. Um, reportedly to me, reported to me by more than one person, and reported to be widely known that Ali Issy's wife works at Safari Restaurant and has for some long time. So members of the media, I gave you a place to go, go to the Safari Restaurant, talk to Ali Issy, who is also Ali Ghani. He's been Congressman Omar's, uh, one of his head people for a long time. Um, and he reported to me multiple times and reported to be widely known in Minneapolis is directly connected to the, the places and the people around where this fraud happened. So I ask you to get out of your basement and go there. Lastly, next week for you, I will have a six and a half minute video that I have obtained that portrays the extravagant life of the lying and cheating Minnesota, Minneapolis thugs that are victimizing in, the innocent people whom these monies instead were intended. So. Um, this will be an eye-popping thing if I'm able to make it available to you. And if I am, I will call a press conference and invite you at that time. With that, uh, Diane, uh, I'm ready for questions if you are. Okay, we've got a question from John Croman. He says, is there any reaction to the fact that the Minnesota Department of Education tried to stop it, but the court ruled in favor of the uh, FOF nonprofit? Food feeding our future, yes. Feeding our future. Um, 
You know, I think we need to learn more about MDE's reaction, John. Um, I'm curious about that. Uh, it seems that they were able to finally shut it off when the news story came out. They were able to shut the program off. Um, I, I don't know if there was a court order telling them they couldn't shut it off, why they would be able to shut it off now. Inquiring minds might want to know that, uh, but I haven't had the time uh, yet and uh, staff have not either. It's a busy day today uh, to make those inquiries and we will make them and I hope that you will as well. That's a very good question. Anybody else have questions? Thank you all, if you have follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks, thanks everybody, bye now.